All right, William here, working on that old cuckoo quail, cuckoo clock. It's a GHS number 39. I don't know if you can see that or not. Pretty cool old clock. Got a problem. If, let me zoom in here a little bit and you can see what I'm going to be looking at. But we have an issue with the chain wheels and the clicks. You can see this is this is working if I'm holding it there like that. But we got some wear in here. If you see that shaft is worn this hole open. Now I'm not sure how loose those are supposed to be, but this seems pretty loose to me. So we're going to address that. Watch this click. If this was hanging in there, see if I can sh show it. And if, it, if everything was just right, it slips past the ratchet. And then the chain, uh, the weights will fall. Well, that's no good. So, the couple things I'm going to look at doing. This one I have partly apart. I've, I've taken the click off already. What I'm going to do is make some new clicks, steel clicks here. They're a little worn right at the tip, up under here. So we're going to make new clicks. Now part of it with this wheel is uh, the rivet's a little loose, the click is a little worn, and the ratchet's a little worn, so uh, plus that hole. Well, I don't think we're going to have to address the ratchet. I'm going to make these I'm going to make some new clicks. I'm going to make them a little bit thicker so it will actually run. You can see where those are, those teeth on that ratchet are worn on the outside edge, and that's for that thing being loose all those years, slipping off it. We're going to make this click a little bit thicker so it'll get into the um, unworn part of this ratchet wheel and then by addressing the hole and making that a, a closer fit to the arbor it's not going to be tight or snug or anything but it's going to be closer we're going to hopefully take care of this problem so what my plan is is I'm going to take a chunk of steel that I had sitting around and we're going to use the lathe to make three new Clicks. Now this just happens to be the right diameter. We'll bore this out so we get the right profile here. They have also have a groove in the back for the click spring to rest in. We'll put that on there. And then we'll just part this off and then we'll hand cut out our shape. We drill the holes, hand cut out our shape. So let's see if see if we could do that. Okay, got our steel ring, and as you can see, our click is that shape. Basically, I'm just gonna I'm gonna mark the center of this in a couple in three different spots because I'm probably gonna make three of these. Uh, once we do that, then I'll just use a pin to lay this on here, and I'll mark out. So we'll just where I want to be around into three different spots, mark it, and then we'll hand cut it. I 
happen to have uh, three rabbits <laughs> for three of them. I needed three. Usually what happens is I have two, but it's been a miracle. I found three of the same size rivets. So I'm happy. We're going to drill those holes in this piece. I wonder if my little drill is going to do it. Good. Three holes. Okay, I marked one of these already. What I've been looking at is the angle of the ratchet compared to the angle of our click. Now, it's all right, but there's kind of a, a burr lifted up on this old click. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark from the edge of the burr to the top edge here. I'm gonna leave a little long and then I'm gonna be able to um, change that a little bit if I need to. And then just marking off the back. Okay, taking a look at our new click. I just want to show you uh, how we've matched up the tail side of that. And then, while grinding it, I wanted to leave it long. And I left a little bit more material on the tip of this. Take it in account uh, anywhere that may have happened, but at the same time, giving it a test to see how it functions. So, by leaving a little bit more on the tip, hopefully this stays together. It's pulling it in a little better. Kind of wants a lock in there, which you want a, a click to do. So a little more length on that looks okay. It's not um, the critical thing here is really that that click draws it. Now we're inward. also a little wider here than we were on the other one on the original. Part of wanting that wider is because then we're able to get into these <coughs> new areas. You could just draw on that in there nicely. Now you can see our wheel is is loose on there. And we're gonna take care of that too. We're basically going to bush this. You can see the space. I'm going to bore that out and bush it. And then uh, ream it out to a closer fit. And I have to do that. I'm going to do it on all of them because they're all pretty loose. But this one's even, this one's even worse. And of course you can see that click is falling right out of there. Okay, I think we got three of the same. Clicks. Okay, from here, well, let's work on the wheels. All right, <clears throat> I thought I'd show this um, sacrificial face plate here uh, for the wheel how I'm going to do that just in case you've never seen one of these 
This one's a little bit bigger than the other one I had. So here's my pin. I'm going to stick that in there. And it's the same diameter as when this is just sitting loose. I'll turn that around. Now poke it in a little bit further than I don't want it sticking out. I'll stick that in there and then I can tighten up this. I can tighten the chuck and that will draw all this tight without closing this. So that's tight and still open so I have enough room to clamp whatever it is I'm going to put in there. And voila. All right, now I'm just going to size my brass. I got some chunks from other projects. Get the diameter here by fitting what I just bored out. Okay, what I did is we know we bored this to a certain diameter and then I made some blanks to fit and what I did is I left my piece in the lathe and I stuck the wheel on in this direction and then I drilled and bored or drilled and reamed this hole to size and then faced off this little part here so that kept everything concentric according to how I bored that hole and how I bored that hole and then I just cut it off and I'm gonna stick this back on the lathe using our little uh, dang it I can't remember the name of that we we'll use that and I'll clamp this on. We're not worried about concentricity right now because all we're going to do is remove this material right here. Now I, <laughs> I'm over here at the bench because I ran out of battery and you guys know how that goes. I was talking and rambling on for half an hour and realized that the camera was dead. So that happens quite often. All right, I'm going to go take care of this, and then we'll be back. Got all our parts cleaned up a little bit, and took the burrs off of all these clicks, chamfered the one side of the click. That's going to be for our rivet. We're going to put the rivet in so the head is on the brass and the click fit on there and we'll hammer that over. We're going to stick that underneath when we hammer that over. That way we have uh, a little space in there. So let's get this hammered over. That's working pretty good. Let's look at it from up here. A little more meat on it. I think that looks okay. 
that's a good functioning click, I think. Of course, the customer will get all the uh, original parts, like always. That way, that's a record of what used to be there. These are held on just with these pieces of steel. If I can get it in there. And then that will get curled around the other way. There's a little play there, which we want on the faces. <clears throat> right here while I had it in the lathe while I was finishing the, uh, the bushing. I dressed these up. I took some of those burrs off. I didn't take too much material off. A little bit. Good. Well that's better than having the weights fall and hit the floor or somebody on the head if they're laying down there or something. Alright, I just wanted to show this uh, antique cuckoo quail movement I'll put back together just looking at how they made things back then they weren't concerned about polishing the cutouts on the plates whether the line was straight things like that I think they were looking more at function give you a spin here This is the quail side. Here's the cuckoo side. Bellows, of course, attached down here. This one's a little different from the ones I've seen. Uh, Bill Stoddard has put a few videos up on some old clocks, cuckoo quail clocks. This one here has this intermediate wheel with the three pins, which lifts this until the very end of the until it gets to the top of the hour and as that's running the quails running and doing the four quail noises then it drops it lifts this and drops it and then allows the cuckoo bird to come out and work pretty cool this one has I would guess these are original bone hands sure look that way to me. If anybody knows for sure, let me know. Let's see if we can get it close in there. I think by looking at that, this piece here, pretty cool. Okay, then let's look at our cuckoo birds and quail or whatever they are for sure. I'm not sure. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. Pretty cool. These look original. See how the wings articulate and see how that works there when I lift on that, how that actually functions. This one too. This one's got a little issue. I'm going to leave it alone though. like original paint on there yet. Okay, put you back in the case.